So, lesson 11, and this is range cards, construction of range cards. Who was taught how to do range cards at their um, recruit training? Mm, okay, a while what ago. can you remember about your range card training? Very little. You remember how to draw a range card? No. No? no. Okay. Well, we're going to use your, your range finder notebooks, you might as well. Um, so effectively, what's the purpose of a range card? To plot, to record known ranges. anything you need for known ranges. Yeah. Who uses it? We do. Yes, to plot what you're doing, but, but actually you're going to... Section commander. You're going to give that range card to one of the machine gun section commanders, yeah. platoon commander, um, company commander, somebody might see your range card. You know, they can be as elaborate as you have time to make them. Some will be as simple as three or four lines on a piece of paper. Some will be full sketches of the a panorama of a um, enemy you know, landscape. So you know, they vary. As the range taker, you're in a position to actually not just estimate the ranges. You're in a position to use your instrument and take ranges accurately. So you're going to be on call. And I would recommend to you that when a machine gun position is in, uh, when machine guns are in position in their setup, you provide a range card for each one of those machine gun positions, uh, particularly if they're not in a pl platoon line, in a firing line um, for indirect fire or anything like that. So if you've got direct fire, i.e. at targets you can see, uh, you should be working out uh, the ranges and producing range cards for the machine gun positions. Um, you're the best person to be able to do that. You've got the instrument that enables you to do that as accurately as possible. So um, we, we won't clear that off now. We, we'll uh, start to, to work out um, the, the, the ranges uh, as you've got. What did you, you will always, some, some principles of the um, range card though, you will always need your baseline marked on it. You will always need your position, and I would endeavour to say that that will be at the centre of the range card unless there is a large object that makes it pointless to do so. So if you are on the, um, you know, the, the, the face of a hill and there are no determinable ranges um, above and beyond you know, to your right hand side, put yourself there and make the most of the space you have to do ranges uh, in, in that way. Um, you will then start, the range cards can be two-dimensional, as in uh, you may well um, just work off them off of a map, uh, like so, uh, and, and, and they replicate a map in a way, and they will just be putting out you know, um, buildings, or uh, woods, uh, hedge lines, stuff like that, at ranges at perhaps you know, 500, 1,000, Fifteen hundred or two thousand yards. So you, know, you, you might um, do it that way. Equally, they could be three-dimensional. You could be faced with a landscape with hills in depth. You know, other things in front of them. Whereas in some ways, you will actually have to work out the um, possibly alongside the platoon commander, as they have the directors and the angle of sight uh, you know, measurements. But you'll be able to work out a full three-dimensional picture of slopes, uh, you know, what's, what's the range to the top of the slope? What's the range to the bottom of the slope? What's that distance you know, between the two? Therefore, you know, how, how are you working out and what, what does that tell you about the steepness of the slope and things like that? So you'll be able to do that. Now, in, this, in that case, the two-dimensional range card doesn't work. You want a three-dimensional range card. So you want to almost be saying that this, um, I've run out of board space here. Uh, but you've got your baseline there, which is actually the, the level of the ground. You then may have um, a hill, you know, some hills here. Uh, perhaps this is a wooded slope, uh, like this. And that's actually what you're going to be looking at. It's not necessarily you know, a map picture. And you will identify on that range card, you know, the ranges up here. And you may actually start to uh, use the ranges in that way. So you know that that far side of that hill is 2,000 yards, this point here is at uh, 700 yards, 
you can start, you know, your graduations are going to differ depending on the ground you're looking at. Um, and then you might have some, you know, a wooded slope along here. That, oh. You might have uh, so, so a wooded area along here that you know is only uh, 200 yards away. So you can start to draw range cards in one of two different uh, you know, three-dimensional or two-dimensional uh, ways. And that will depend on the ground. And I would endeavour that you practice both. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the instruments back out into the field and we're going to start to draw up some of these range cards. We'll start with just purely two-dimensional and we'll move on to three-dimensional sketches as appropriate. Um, possibly in, in the next sort of this lesson, because this is a lesson that we repeat now uh, in the second stage as well. So we'll focus on two-dimensional uh, range cards at this stage, so we can check those off against maps, and then in our second stage of training, we'll work on our three-dimensional range cards. Okay? Yes, sir. Worth saying as well that, of course, you can have a 360-degree range card. could be 270. It doesn't always have to be this 180 diagram. That's just what... If, if, you, if you're in a position that's in the front of the line, it's going to be 180 because somebody else, 50, 25 yards along, is going to have that's a range card in the same way. 361, yes, yeah. it will be. Um, but there may be a case where you start to develop, if you're in a forward position with no flanking um, uh, protection or anything like that, no flank protection, you may start to develop a, a larger range card than just the 180. You may even have a narrower range card if you've got overlapping positions or very limited fields of fire. So range cards are going to be an, an essential part of um, the, the, your interpretation in a way, how you tell others what you're doing and the information they need moving forward. So we'll go out and practice those. Any questions? No? No. no. Excellent. We'll get on and do that. So we're in the field for the uh, some taking ranges outdoors you, and to build our range cards. Now, what we need to do is identify six objects uh, that you will then build your range card for those six objects. Now, the landscape that we've got available gives us, uh, and, and tell me if you don't understand, but it gives us the opportunity to use a, um, fr from the left-hand side of where we're viewing, if you have the centre of your arc on the large white house immediately in front of you, that will be one of your ranges. You will then need to, we will then, so working from the left of that at your 11 o'clock, we will use the corner of the field. You have a fence line that runs down the left hand side immediately in front of you and that intersects with a hedge line. Right. That corner will be your first range. We will then move up to the skyline and the second range will be the right hand edge of the trees on the skyline to your 11 o'clock. Third range will be the large white house, the top left hand corner of that house. The fourth range will be to your two o'clock, the brick house with two red chimneys, approximately uh, below the skyline one thumb width. Your fifth range will be the right hand edge of the hedge line in the field immediately in front of you at your 12 o'clock. It disappears into the field that right hand edge. Your sixth range will be the water trough. You have three water troughs in your view. The furthest of those that appears at your one o'clock and in between the two other water troughs. That water trough will be your sixth range. So you're required to take those ranges, uh, take the full 10 for each of those and construct your range card accordingly. Understood? Yes, Sergeant. Carry on. So as a reminder, your first range is to where? End of fence line. Excellent. The second range? Uh, right hand side of the wood. Third range? Uh, top left of the white house. Fourth range? The brick building with the two chimneys. Fifth range? Uh, the end of the hedge line, middle ground. 
Sixth range. Uh, the furthest water drop. Excellent. Now, you're expected to construct your table before drawing the range card. Are you doing so? Yes, yeah, Sergeant. There you go, the table's out of the manual. Uh, it's actually used as one of your annual tests, so get familiar with it. You will be marked upon how you do this table. So you, are, you need your setting ray at the top, in which case we've indicated that that large white house is your 12 o'clock uh, in your clock ray. You'll then have your degrees right or left. Now you can estimate that based on your knowledge of your um, hand, your, your knuckles, uh, and the degrees that you count off of those. Uh, it may be worth just for, for this simplistic range card, the two dimensional simplistic range card, just use the clock rays uh, in, in that degrees table and we can build it uh, a later date. So that's your, your table and obviously range, each of those will be 10 ranges that you'll build. That will be your mean observed range that goes in the range column. Uh, and then, so you, you need to calculate all of your average ranges once you do, but yes, put in your six objects that we identified. So we've got end of fence. You've got the second one, which is the right hand side of that, uh, those trees on the skyline. The third, which is the top left of the large white house, top left corner. The fourth is the farmhouse with the two red chimneys. The fifth is the end of the hedge line in the field immediately ahead of you. And the sixth is that white water trough uh, furthest from us. Yeah, it's quite a good method. Uh, actually, I've done that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sorry, but it's in the left hand corner. Yeah. Right. ranges per object, average them, work out the mean, so object one. Right. Start taking your ranges. So remembering to take your coincidences from different sides each time. And you can, obviously, if you can remember two numbers at once, hopefully you can, you just do one and then the other, remember those two numbers and write them down together to speed up your range taking. So there you go, that's your 10th range on that first object. What are you doing now? Adding them all up, finding the medium range, mean range. Mean, mean observed range, M-O-R. Yep, 
is 639, yes? Yes. 639 yards. Excellent. You can move on to the second range then. The second object was what? Uh, the right hand uh, edge of the wood on the horizon. Excellent. Okay, so that's the end of your second range there. What I'm going to do is give you a little tip. So if you put those into your table then, so your object for the first range then is uh, 639 yards. Second is 4055. Create a new page. And write, no, turn it onto landscape. Write down the side zero at the top. Go from top to, no, top to bottom. Write down this left hand side here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, along the top of the page, in your columns, right, uh, you've got four ranges left to do, so write three. Give yourself, some, yep, so three. Give yourself some space, four, five, and six. So those are your the rest of your and now you've got a little grid to fill in with your 10 ranges uh, so cross out your zero it'll only confuse you uh, but that's obviously your your headings and now you can put your ranges that you take for each of those in this little table you've created and it will make it easier to know when you've got 10 ranges rather than have to count them through all the time and make it simpler yes sergeant and then you can you can sum it all at the bottom um, and perhaps you know, in, in the future uh, try and get a sum row and then you've got your average row as well once you've um, well, what, what the actual mean observed range is so third what was your third uh, the large target? white house excellent left hand corner Okay, so coming to the end of the third range then. And what's our mean observed range for this one? Uh, 2,290. Um, 2, Excellent. You can fill that in on your object table, on your, on your table there against your object. So you can see how this is starting to build all the information you need to sit and draw a range card very quickly. So on to the fourth, which is... The brick house with the chimneys. Now remember, you obviously haven't got much magnification on the range finder, so everything has to be within you know, what you can see. And we can see, because it's a nice bright day, that that is quite a, a, a house that you can describe by its chimneys any poorer visibility and we'd be struggling and it would obviously affect your accuracy as a result so what are you lining up on the house i'm lining up the uh, straight sides of the two chimneys straight sides of the two chimneys good nice straight, straight line object So what's the range to that house then? Uh, 2,170 yards. Excellent. So 
So our fifth object is the uh, right hand end of the hedge line in the field below. So this is still a simple object because it's the right hand of a hedge line, uh, but clearly because the colours start to be blurred you can only do this in good visibility. If this was poorer visibility, uh, as, with the, as with the house previously, we'd start to struggle and it would become a difficult object. Um, but no, we're, we're lucky today that it's a good straight line object, right hand edge of the field. What have we got for this one? Uh, 622 yards. Okay. So what was the first object? The uh, end of the fence line uh, on our left hand side. And how far was that? That was 639 yards. So what's the difference between those two? Not much? Uh, yards. Worth, worth just checking. 17 yards. 17 yards, okay. So you know, visually, Visually, the uh, the right hand end of that hedge line looks slightly further than the uh, that the end of the fence line there. So not by much. It seems to go away from a sort of slight angle. So it would be worth just bearing that in mind uh, that your accuracy factor might be greater than 17 yards there. Um, but it certainly does look to go away slightly from us. Not by much. So we won't worry about retaking those ranges. Uh, but always start to question and make sure that things make sense in relation to each other when you're building this range card. But you can move on to the sixth object then, which is the furthest uh, water, animal water trough. Excellent. Now you've got the tripod set up slightly higher so you can sit behind it today. Um, always worth considering your ground. We haven't worked on to, to, to our field craft lessons yet, but we've got some advantages in the position we're in, in that we're slight on the slight forward slope so we're not silhouetted against the skyline, uh, but we're able to sit. Uh, we would be in enemy observation, uh, but worth you know considering always you know what what's You've got to be comfortable as a range taker, uh, otherwise it starts to affect your accuracy and your fatigue. So that was your last range. Okay, so what does that come out to? Uh, check. Slight maths error. Okay. That can't be right. Why can't it be right? Because I haven't got anything in the six. Because it's uh, not. That's because that's, that's not right. So it didn't look right? No. Okay, excellent. Good judgment. Okay. So it's 875 yards. Excellent. So pop that on your table. Well done for using your judgment. It wouldn't have looked right. So 875 yards. So we've now got the table that gives you all of your rays and your ranges and you can start to build the range card as shown in the manual. So start a new page. Get a nice fresh page. Uh, sometimes you'll want this bigger, sometimes you, you'll want it smaller, but on this case, uh, so if we plot, give yourself a baseline, you're going to be marked up in the middle of that baseline. Wait a minute. Let me stop. stop you there. So we're doing it in the field so we don't have you know protractors and things to use. 
but draw your circles first. You, you know, these these ray the, these edges here. Just draw them roughly. And because we're you know, so so you can scale this dependent on the ranges you've taken. Third one there, and then fourth one out. So what we're gonna say is that that fourth one, so your your what was your furthest range? Uh, 4,055 yards. So let's make each of those uh, 1,000 yards. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. And now plot them as, you, you know, as appropriate with the ranges. So object one, fence edge. 640 yards, 19 degrees left. Uh, yeah, that's about right. We're going to draw our line to it as well, so we know. And we're going to write on there what it is and its range. So 639 fence line, edge, end of fence. Okay, next was number two, was that furthest one, was it? Yeah, the yeah, right so hand four, edge of the woods. Right hand edge of the woods at 18, at 12 degrees. So just beyond that 4,000 line, excellent. Yes, always add the range. White House 2290, and that was the centre of our arc, so that is... Yep. Now, if you've got objects that are too close together, you can always draw a dashed line look like this to annotate and label it uh, some distance away. So this was our brick house, yes? Yes. Sorry. Now these are very much in our foreground. Okay, happy? Completed. Yeah. So we need to date and time that of when we're taking it. Uh, and then you put your name, rank, and, uh, and and sign it off as your piece of work. But also, of course, we need to put the grid reference as well uh, and the location uh, of you 
as opposed to uh, any of those so that it is useful otherwise it's just you know, inaccurate so there we go finished off nicely well done Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Please support us on Patreon if you're able to and let us know of anything you'd like to see in the future. I look forward to hearing from you.